in the end, it was all about the friends we made along the way. Which is why I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome back, friends. On this video, we're going to be touching on a very important question. Is Near Protocol dead? Should we just pack it up, close this channel, get a Web2 job, potentially deny what we've been doing for the last two years? And to answer this question, which should not be taken lightly, we're going to dive deep into a blog post by the Near Foundation recently. And I know that perhaps reading off a website, it's not the most exciting of videos. So I'm going to rephrase it by saying that we're going to read a manifesto or a call to action that the Near Foundation has shared recently. And I will be doing two things to differentiate myself. The first one is a dramatic yeah. reading of the blog post. And the second one is reading between the lines. And this is what I like to call alpha. Of course, you may disagree with me. Whether you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments section below. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The New Foundation recently shared their strategic outlook for 2023. This was posted on December the 15th. And the reason I want to give it more visibility is because they've been doing a lot of posts about transparency on chain and whatever other words they use. And let's be honest, this time of the year, people are probably mourning their losses, but there is some spicy alpha in here. On the very first paragraph, we have the problem. And I'm talking about like macro problem. Like why Web3? Why do we show up every day and come to work? Dramatic reading begins. The recent stream of news clearly demonstrates that the world needs Web3. Trust in legacy institutions is breaking down. Individual privacy and individual freedom are equally at risk. And the major Web2 platforms we use every day have become monopolies that focus on profit and not people. I really like that framing because, well, let's be honest, it's kind of hard to disagree with it. Everywhere you look around you, the world is collapsing. And sometimes technology for technology's sake can feel a bit pointless, even a bit self-indulgent. So it's a nice reminder that we are aware of the challenges in the world and we're actually driven by those challenges. Second paragraph, dramatic reading continues. Yet, Web3 hasn't fully delivered on its promise to open the web. While important progress has been made, much more needs to be done for this technology to deliver fairer, freer digital systems. Today's Web3 suffers from inaccessible user experience, siloed applications which are difficult to discover, few real-world use cases, and technology tribalism. Put simply, too much hype and not enough value for users. Bam! So this is when you know that the rest of the blog post is definitely worth reading. The rest of the video is definitely worth watching. And it just calls it out for what it is. We spent way too long on a bubble with unicorns shitting rainbows. And we ignored the fact that not all Web3 is the same. And that we have some real challenges for mass adoption. And that, well, let's be honest, we never really thought about the user, which has led to a really poor state of the apps out there. I'm not going to read verbatim the entire next piece, but basically it starts to lay the foundation for what Near is, its core value proposition, why you should be paying attention, why this time it is different. Since 2018, Near has focused on building a scalable, secure technology and infrastructure that is easy to use and enables developers to freely create usable apps. I just want to point out all the not so subtle and definitely intentional mentions to usability. Then we have a comparison chart between 2021 and 2022. And what we basically see is 10x growth on every metric, total accounts, monthly active wallets, active developers, number of projects, transactions, and even outside funding. The only metric that we don't track on this post and that it's actually not up 10x is price. And the reason why I mention this is because the foundation doesn't talk about price. I think that's appropriate. But also because a lot of people out there do use price as an indicator. And if you were to go only by price, well, let's be honest, the entirety of crypto is dead. So establishing the right metrics for progress is super important. So after that warm up, we've put on the gloves and we start throwing punches. While Web3 has yet to deliver on its promises, the Near Foundation believes that Near is the only ecosystem where Web3 promises can be delivered and where mainstream adoption can happen. All the fundamentals have been established for some time. Near is charging full speed ahead into its next growth phase in 2023. 
the rest of the post covers what those convictions are, what those fundamentals are, and the specific actions that are going to be taken to get there. I love this. Neo the Foundation and AVB alike believe that Neo is the only ecosystem able to deliver on the Web3 promises. Then why the hell has this not been the message all along? I love that they specifically mentioned the fundamentals. These fundamentals, which we'll jump into in just one minute, are precisely the reason that as someone who had absolutely no ties with Neo, entirely from the community, entirely grassroots, I fucked around with every ecosystem, Avalanche, Neo, Polygon, Solana, in a specific order. I was drawn to Nier because I could see the writing on the wall. And the reason why I started this channel and the podcast and all the other initiatives in the marketing side is because I've been wondering for a long time, why the fuck is no one talking about this? So it's good to see that the leadership of the foundation now has these front and center. So what are these fundamentals you may be asking? Fundamentals and convictions. Number one, Nier has the best technology in web three. Boom. There, we said it. Provably scalable, easy to onboard, and use, developer-friendly, secure, decentralized. What else would you want? The most advanced account model and onboarding in the blockchain space. You may even notice that they mention onboarding twice. I don't think that's an error. I think that is intentional. Just to drive the point home. In fact, I would challenge anyone out there to debate me, or maybe better, Ilya or Alex Shevchenko on whether any other ecosystem has better technology than Nier. Number two, Nier has world-class talent and ample runway. Now, this point may seem self-serving, although admittedly the people that wrote this blog did a fantastic job, but recent events have also shown that if the team is living in a polycule in the Bahamas, maybe there are some issues and i don't want to make any claims as to the relationship status amongst the near ecosystem members professional or otherwise but they do make a really good point they start by highlighting the talent of both foundation and pagoda and all the circles and ecosystem around it they've got a link to the council and advisors some pretty big names a lot of experience to keep us in track they also reference the brilliant cohort of entrepreneurs building companies and apps and wonderful YouTube channels like this one. Well, I actually don't mention that one. That was an editorial choice line. And finally, they mention responsible treasury management. I find this one to be really interesting because responsible treasury management was seen just a few months ago when the bulls were still raging as really bad fund allocation that may have actually been holding the ecosystem back. And I'm not going to make any judgments on this video specifically, but at the moment, that responsible treasury management or whatever you want to call the previous funding patterns have led to the foundation having runway for allegedly five years. Third, achieving mainstream adoption is about users, not TVL, not flashy headlines, not cultish maximalism. Near focuses on what matters for the long term, and the bear market will separate the high quality projects from the ones fuels mostly by hype. What I really like about this is this is the speak of builders and OGs that have been involved in crypto since 2016. This is a way that people that have seen many bulls and many bears and all the bullshit and the scams and weird stuff along the way. This is the way we talk to each other. And it is very good to me that even if the foundations at times have felt distant, it's really good that the leadership of the foundation also holds these things to be true. Final fundamental conviction, Web 2.5 will get us there. This is an interesting point because just by naming conventions, some people in crypto would dismiss Web 2.5 as, well, you kind of didn't make it to Web 3, so they assume you may have failed at the Web 3 stage, so you went only halfway through. But actually, the right framing is much more interesting. The right framing is, we're not limiting ourselves to the very small play playgrounds and very small use cases of Web 3 or pure crypto native. We're actually doing the work to bring the entirety of the existing internet over to Web3. So Web 2.5 is about identifying those potential projects and generation of Web2 apps and communities and bringing them over to Web3. Strategic approach. 
in this section they were able to capture a lot of big brain ideas into one graph or one design, whatever you want to call this, an infographic. In the middle, in the center, we've got near, like an eagle with primitives and infra on the one side and user journey on the other one. And then superposed in an upside down triangle, says partnerships. And then from the bottom, a pyramid with two sections. The very base is community and on top of it, accelerator. So what does this all mean? Enabling Nier to make the most of these convictions in today's climate means committing to the following goals over the next year. Important. Looking at the partnership side, the Nier Foundation has a top-down approach. Ooh, controversial in the world of crypto. What does it mean? The world-class business development team of the Foundation will focus on working with major applications and brands with substantial established communities to partner with Near on real use cases that drive engagement, such as ticketing and earning. High traction focus verticals include sports, entertainment, and loyalty. Major partnerships in recent months include Grupo Nutresa here in Colombia, Google Cloud, and the Sweat Economy. I personally like this one. Let's be honest. Everyone has been praising the business development team over at Polygon. They've been able to close some major partnerships and deals. But the devil is in the detail and in the implementation. Are the users of those big companies that are going with some other blockchain or some other service provider going to actually be able to activate those users? Is the user experience there? How much friction do they experience? My thesis on this area has always been crystal clear. There is no reason why these big companies would limit themselves to just one provider. So if they've opened the door to Web3, Fantastic, they signed with Polygon. Well, guess what? Most likely they're open to signing with any other blockchain. And this is where we come in with our value proposition and creating a much smoother user experience. So I hope that the business development team is active pursuing those companies that have already proven that they want to do Web3. Then we're moving to funding. And here there are some big, big changes. Any Web3 ecosystem is an emergent product of a dedicated community of believers. The bottom-up, grassroots approach for the next year on year will empower the community to invest in its own expansion through grants, primarily for three major community DAOs. Developer DAO, which is brand new, but they've got a super sick looking website. I'll make sure that I link it on the section below. And they have already created a, a bunch of community working groups that are doing great work. The Marketing DAO, which is a proud sponsor of this channel, and the Creatives DAO. This means that the foundation will no longer directly allocate capital to projects, instead supporting the community in these decisions and further decentralizing key elements of the ecosystem. This grassroots trial will be further supported by the NDC, which has achieved initial traction. What I find fascinating here is that the foundation is basically saying, we're done with community. The community is best place to support itself. And now that these channels have been established to fund the community, it's basically a call to action for the community to be proactive. We no longer have to wait for the foundation to say go. You can start your own initiative and then through these working groups and through these funding vehicles, invest in its own expansion. And then the second component, which would be the top half of the pyramid, is the creation of an accelerator. The Near Foundation will form an early stage accelerator that will provide support to promising projects and founders on Near in areas including education, tech, hiring, legal, UX, and go-to-market guidance. What is fascinating here is that there seems to be a break between just allocating money to projects and being more actively involved nurturing the projects that have potential. This is a departure from handing money over and having no visibility and no recourse, really. It's probably targeting some of the challenges around the multi-chain radars, going from blockchain to blockchain, collecting money, and not really having any interest in deploying on your blockchain. And also the other problem of having teams that do have an interest in deploying your blockchain and have a lot of potential, they may just be lacking in one or more of the areas that they mentioned that the accelerator will be covering. 
So now they're like, okay, how can we increase the chances of success for all these teams? It gives me like YC Combinator vibes. The final section of looking ahead, I find fascinating because it introduces the concept of a blockchain operating system. The reassurance that there is indeed a grand plan and that we've been executing. With Nier's protocol, infrastructure and developer tooling already well established, the next step in providing the best user experience to Web3 will be at the discovery layer, the connective tissue that connects applications, tooling, social earning and developer components across the web. This stuff is what we call the blockchain operating system. Many of the building blocks of the blockchain operating system already exist on Nier, either as features or apps. These include Nier Crowd, a gig economy platform with 50% of users transacting every day, and Nier Social, an on-chain social network with a widget framework that lets everyone fork an entire app front-end to build new experiences. Combined with the upcoming improvements to onboarding, including EVM wallets, which we're calling remote accounts, this is going to be super wild. So this is going to enable any user to use a Near app and log in directly with their existing wallet from other ecosystems. So if you're an Ethereum user and you have MetaMask, or if you're whatever, you'll be able to log into a Near application without ever having to create a Near account directly with your MetaMask account from other ecosystem. Psh. Native Meta transactions, key palm, woof woof. Shout out to the doggy and new chat social capabilities. Near will deliver even more amazing value to developers and users. All of these user-centric elements further up the stack, particularly at the app layer, will form the basis for a core component of the Near ecosystem's product and technical focus in 2023. Pagoda, Near Foundation, and other key ecosystem participants will work together to deliver the best possible technology with an increasingly integrated and seamless experience for developers and end users. The goal from here is evolving near to be more than just a layer one blockchain. It will become a global blockchain operating system. Still early days, but building is underway and the vision is clear. Damn. I like it. I really like it. Once again, I see this as a manifesto, as a call to action. And I like it especially because this is something that has come up during several Twitter spaces that we've held talking about marketing on Near. Questions around what makes Near different? What is our personality? What is our essence? And I've always said it, we are a builder's blockchain. We're focused on user experience. So I really like seeing this language from the foundation, user-centric usability, user experience. And I really like the focus of integrating things and really enabling all the people building on Nier to maximize their chances of success. So going back to the question where we started, is Nier protocol dead? I don't think so. I think that we're going to see the transition or the successful closing of a chapter, which was mostly technical driven. And we're only starting to open the next chapter, which is going to be full of opportunities. We're getting closer to that end user layer and to the application building layer, which is probably going to be much more interactive, much more fun. We're going to see a lot more activity. And if you ignore the price, I think that 2023 is going to be an amazing year. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And I hope that you have a wonderful day. As always, if you like this video, make sure that you like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Bye.